you can't control it. You can't control this. You can't control this much awesomeness. Oh my word. <laughs> Help! After 10 years of homeschooling, school was becoming a drag. We want our kids to embrace the lifelong adventure of learning. So we decided to sell our comfortable suburban home and make the world our classroom. Joe, Trisha, Hannah, Sarah, Gideon, Izzy, and Penny Dog. We are doing life deliberately. So in this video, we wanted to share with you uh, some of the troubles that we had in Florida over the winter reserving campgrounds. Yeah, finding a place to stay wasn't as easy as we expected it to be. Thanks a lot, Florida. <laughs> Thanks, Florida. So we were in Wisconsin for the fall through, what, the first week of December. Right. And it was like the second week of December that we, we came down from Wisconsin to Florida. And we had reserved about four weeks worth of campgrounds in Florida, and it was in East Florida, uh, near the Space Coast, near Kennedy Space Center, uh, east of Orlando. So that's kind of where uh, we started in Florida. And our thought was that we could make campground reservations similar to how we made campground reservations over the summer when we were following the Lewis and Clark Trail. We would get to a campground, we'd make the next reservation, and we just kind of make reservations as we go. But that's not exactly how it worked out in Florida. Right, so after being there for two or three weeks, you know, we decided it's, it's about time to start figuring things out. And so we had kind of formulated this plan where we would each make our own like little bucket list for Florida. What were the things that we wanted to see? And then we kind of compared and we kind of decided what we really wanted to do, Lord willing, was we'd start at the tip of Florida and depending on where we could find places to stay, we would either work our way up the Atlantic coast or we would work our way up into kind of the Gulf Coast armpit of Florida, if you will. So that was kind of our plan. We really wanted to get to South Florida. Uh, it, it, it's warmer down there. And so we had things on the bucket list like going to swim or snorkel with manatees and maybe a paddleboard and snorkel. The Keys have great snorkeling. There's yeah. a reef down there. Go to the Everglades. We had put Key West. on there Key West, St. Augustine. Um, all, all kinds of different We wanted to hit Jupiter. We've been to Jupiter, Florida, West Palm Beach area and the Atlantic. We wanted to see Dune Dog one more time. Dune Dog. Right. So we were looking forward to exploring. And so Joe got a hold of our list and we kind of formulated this little plan. And then he started making phone calls <laughs> and looking things up on the web. And the reason I laugh is because I got laughed at a lot. That was really unexpected. I would call campgrounds and I'd say, hey, I'm looking to make uh, reservations maybe a week. Um, and they would laugh at me. They would say, son, we don't have reservations available until May or August or something like that. Uh, we just, they, 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 they were laughing at me that I would even think of calling and making a reservation. Weren't they saying you needed to book like nine to 12 months ahead? Yeah, yeah, I kept getting that over and over and over. Hey, if you wanna stay here, you, you need to make reservations 10, 11, 12 months in advance. Now, recently I was watching Less Junk More Journey and they were able to get last minute reservations in places near where we were staying. How do you do that? But here's the difference is they were boondocking. So they did not oh. need hookups. They did not need electric or water or anything. And so, you know, they have more freedom, but we do not have that luxury. We have to have at a minimum, we have to have electric. Yeah, we're and not hooked up with solar or enough battery. Right. So boondocking is not an option for us and we really do need um, at least minimal hookups. So yeah, we got laughed at a lot and... Um, I remember I, I started sharing that with other um, snowbirds uh, at a campground and they, they laughed at us too and they were confirming saying, yeah, we made these reservations a year ago. You're not going to get anywhere 
you know, last minute down, down here. Now, the other thing I should say is that we prefer to stay in a place probably about a week at a time. Yeah. Um, when we're traveling, we'll oftentimes stay in a place shorter than that, we're maybe more like four or five nights at a stop, but we had kind of just planned to take our time in Florida. And um, the reason we wanted to stay a week at a time is because there's schoolwork the kids have to do, right. there's work that Trisha and I both have to do, and if we're moving every two or three days... It's difficult to get anything done, Yeah. On especially on moving days, it's just hard. So that's why we were looking for a, a week at a time, but that right. was proving to be impossible. So when Joe started booking places to stay, you were finding what? Well, yeah, so I had to change our expectation and now it was getting down to, uh, we're looking for like one or two nights at a time. Can we skip, can, can we squeeze in this one or two nights here or there? And, and that is what we ended up having to do. So I found uh, the, the only campgrounds that I could really get into were kind of north central Florida around Gainesville and then the Panhandle right. by um, Pensacola, um, Panama City, Tallahassee. Tallahassee. Um, and, and, and so I would just, and I was kind of in a panic mode because we knew we, we had to be out of our campground like in three days, right. but we didn't have anywhere to go. And it was just trying to get two nights here, three nights there. Um, and so that ended up being how we spent uh, our time in Florida right. over the winter. Right. So we wanted to explore Florida and we did end up exploring Florida. The Panhandle. It just ended up not being the way that we thought it would. So yeah. our first stop in Florida after being in the Titusville and Melbourne area was Rainbow Springs State Park. Yeah. And we have had several people say to us, oh, we tried to get in there, we couldn't get in there. It's so gorgeous and truly, it was a yeah. beautiful campground. I think we were there three nights. Like three nights, maybe. yeah. Um, and just gorgeous sights and there's some hiking you can do and- There's natural springs that come up that form rivers and the manatees come in there beautiful yeah and you can rent uh, canoes or paddle boards or whatever if you don't have those and so we didn't have a ton of time to explore but we had a little bit of time to walk around a little bit one day i took uh, hannah into ocala which is the nearest um, large town and um, joe had the younger kids and they did a little bit of exploring we did a picnic today. lunch and i took them down to the water it was a little little chilly to, to swim. Mm -hmm. I mean what this was January. Oh yes. There's no there's no swimming at this point. Yeah. And that's that's partly why we want to get to southern Florida because we thought it'd be a little bit more warmer right. and we could swim in pools and, and lakes and rivers. But um, yeah, so we didn't so we missed that on the swimming. But Rainbow Springs is definitely a beautiful state right. campground. I tried to take the kids out on a hike one day and we had Penny Dog and we went to the woods and we started at this trailhead and there was a plaque there and it was describing about the black bears in Florida and we were like what is going on here and sure enough um especially in the panhandle area and kind of the armpit of Florida a little bit there's black bears and so we thought well we're just gonna skip this little hike <laughs> not quite prepared to be in bear territory um, black bears don't hibernate in Florida the way they do up north in Wisconsin, but um, they're a little more subdued during the colder months of like January and February, we found out. So um, that ended up being something we encountered in um, the following campgrounds too. But um, so we had a little bit of fun exploring Rainbow Springs. And then we went um, further west into Aklakani, I hope I'm saying it right. Aklakani? Aklakani State Park. And we were surprised at what we found there. It, it's, it's mostly forest, it's wooded, and there's there's these small rural towns in the middle of nowhere. Um, totally a different part of Florida than I, I was expecting to see. This is the non-touristy part of yes. Florida. So, and people would tell us that, that this is kind of like the, the real Florida yeah. that is preserved from tourists. And so, I mean, it was it was woodsy and kind of like out in the middle of nowhere. It and felt like northern Wisconsin. 
right? It all did. all, all it the did. coniferous uh, trees. The only difference of the woods was really the palms that we would yeah. see on the trail. But I mean, we had close encounters with wildlife. I got some great um, time watching a raccoon. We had deer within like a hundred yards yep. of our travel trailer. We some spotted... T Rexes, some uh, brontosauruses. We spotted deer on our hike one day, and velociraptors, hawks, and, and wild Joe hair situations going on here. But anyway, it was it was just really fun to kind of be out out in the woods. Yeah, yeah already. So we are at the Aklakani. Aklakani <laughs> River State Park. State Park in Florida. And we are striking out on a little trail here and just super appreciating the beauty. The fauna is beautiful. Of this really incredible state park. So we are doing something we've never done before. Road school field trip. Yeah, we've at, never done school okay. before. At 1030 my... at night. Today is the... 20th of January. 2019. And Happy New Year. We are going to see the... Super Blood, blood wolf, wolf Moon. moon. Dinosaur. Dinosaur moon. <laughs> Super okay. blood wolf dinosaur moon. So we're on a quest to go to the beach to see if we can see the super blood wolf moon. And hopefully get some good pictures. But not just the super blood wolf moon, it's an eclipse. It's a total eclipse of the heart. Of the super blood wolf moon. Total I eclipse of the super blood wolf moon. Dinosaur. Okay, so here we go. We had to kind of zigzag. I mean, again, two or three nights here or there. Yeah, but this time we went south of Ocala to the Santos Trailhead and Campground. And this area is really well known for mountain biking. And so they have all these trails, hiking, biking trails. Um, you can take your horse out there and uh, explore. Did we mention horse. we got a horse? We're, we have a horse trailer now. Towing it behind the, yeah. the, the travel trailer. Yep. <laughs> I think a dog is good enough. Um, but the kids and I had some fun with doing a hike one day. Didn't you take the dog yeah. through the woods one yeah. day too? And we are embarking on a little hike here at Santos Trailhead Campground. And there's an official Florida trail. So we're going to go check it out. It looks pretty fun. It looks more fancy than the Enchanted hike. <laughs> but we shall see. We shall see.
So the, the, the point is, um, when you're booking camp grounds, um, sometimes you have to be flexible, yeah. right? I mean, this this lifestyle of full-time RVing, uh, it's very different. If, I mean, if we had a brick and mortar home with a foundation that was always parked in the same place, um, you don't have to think about where we're we gonna stay tonight or where we're we gonna stay next week. I mean, that's not something that you even think about. It's just, it's a constant in your life, right? When you're full-time RV, that is not a constant. It, it uh, And different people are going to be comfortable um, with longer terms of planning. Mm -hmm. Like I'm thinking, given what we learned this winter in Florida, we do need to start booking out further in advance. For example, um, we've talked about maybe next winter, we, we wanna come back to Florida. We, 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 we wanna get to Southern Florida. We wanna get to the Keys, but uh, we're gonna have to make those reservations now or within the next few months. And so we wanted to kind of give you that advice and share what our experience has been booking uh, campgrounds uh, this winter in Florida. Yeah, I think in general, one of the things that we've learned is that it's really important to be attentive to what are peak seasons where you're traveling. Yeah. Um, if you are going to be traveling through the Midwest, Plain States, I don't think that that's as much of a destination as Florida in the winter time. Yeah. And so, yes, it gets busy there, and you probably don't want to wait till the last minute to book around Rapid City, South Dakota, yeah. around the 4th, 4th of, of July. July. Yeah. But um, in the winter time in Florida or anywhere on the coast yeah. when it is warm, whether you're on Atlantic or Pacific side, you need to plan ahead. Yeah. Those are the places where we've had the most difficulty booking sites. Because apparently, and we didn't know this, but apparently um, other people have had the thought that maybe they should go south of Florida for the winter. Right? I thought we were original with that. Other people like warm weather too. Other I people like warm it. weather who are portable, who have an RV. And so, you know, Florida only has so many RV spots and if yeah. more and more people are, are, are RVing, and that's the case, I keep hearing these reports and there's right. so many more RVs on the road now than there were a year or two or three ago. RV sales are skyrocketing. People like us are selling their home and moving into an RV. And so it's supply and demand, right? right. And. Uh, you know, a few years ago, it wasn't this much demand, but that demand, demand is there. Right. And so you just have to be cognizant of that. Where are you gonna go? Is it a peak season? And if it is, like Florida in the winter, you've got to book further in advance. Hey, if you are going full-time RV, would you, and you're new to this, would you comment below? We'd love to just hear from you. Just give us a little shout out and uh, we can connect with you further. And if there's topics that you want to hear about uh, that would be relevant to full-time RV, uh, let us know and we would love to hit on those. Yeah, we want to teach you from our experiences, the mistakes we've made, the things we're learning along the way, maybe help you out. A lot of, I think more and more people are considering this yeah. full-time RV lifestyle. So if you can learn from our mistakes. We want to bless you with that. Um, we made some mistakes with not booking far enough in advance in Florida for this winter. And hopefully we won't make that mistake again. All right. Thanks for joining us, friends. See you soon. Bye. This is really weird. We did it. Oh, I like that better. I like my hair. <laughs> like he doesn't. <laughs> my wife makes fun. I'm gonna poof it up. My hair is gonna get poofed for this Lawrence. video. Lawrence. Lawrence to give my husband a free haircut. I'm losing it up here. Well, mentally and physically with the hair. But, are we recording this? Yes. All right. I know, now I gotta fix it, because you ruined it. <laughs>